We are about to enter the most important month in the history of the country called Kenya. July 2022. And what everybody within the borders of Kenya needs to do is to prepare. Prepare. Make sure you prepare. Now, for those who are alert and observant, you will have noticed that on this channel, we have been led to prepare. And how have we been preparing? By putting a lot of emphasis on the events of 2007, January 2008, because they are very relevant. Yeah to what is about to unfold in Kenya. Unprecedented. Now for those of us on this channel who are spiritual, I will elaborate on that towards the tail end of this video. So please stay with me. For the rest of us, it is a good time to take stock of where we are in Kenya today, politically, in preparation for August 9th, 2022. Have you ever talked about an event that will never happen? Have you ever prepared for a scheduled event that will never take place? I will go into much more detail about that again in the spiritual section of this video. Yeah, because if you're not spiritual, you'll not be able to understand. Although I can give you a peek by telling you, the long and short of it is something called the judgment of Almighty God. Anyway, for the rest of us, we need to take stock of where we are politically in preparation for what is ahead, or what we think is ahead. And in my view, where we are politically was summarized magnificently perfectly, very well, very accurately by the Jubilee Vice Chair David Murade on a talk show on NTV on the 22nd day of June this year, 2022. Now, Murade said some shocking things which most Kenyans missed. Yeah. But he even told us what is in the missing server. He gave us the figures. Oh yes. But most importantly, he gave us information on the scheduled general elections that leaves absolutely no doubt as to what will unfold after that general election. Yeah, he made it so obvious. And that is what I'm going to be covering in this very special show. This very important show. I can confidently say, to date, this is the most important show I've ever done. Ever! On this channel. And I believe I've done many shows. Well over 2,400 videos on this channel. Those are many. This one is special. Important. So, karibu sana. And this is a video worth watching more than once. Yeah. Kwa sabu ninzito. It is heavy. But extremely important very important. Karibu sana. All for a better Kenya. All for the purpose for which Kenya was created by Almighty God.
There is one thing I always remember about David Murad that makes me stop everything I'm doing to pay attention to what he's saying. And that thing I always remember is that Bwana Murade never applied for a job. Yeah, People went looking for him. Now that is absolutely significant because even if you take your workplace, the people who came there with applications, the people who are sent there recommended by somebody else, and they arrived there, and they did an interview, and they got the job, will never be the same as the people whom the owner of the company left his comfortable chair and went out to look for. Yeah, maybe they didn't have their number. They called a few people. Or maybe even if they knew where they live, they went all the way to where that person lives. And they talked to them. And they told them, Please, I need you. I need you to do one, two, three. I need you. I'm going to give you a job. You will agree with me. Even if and when things go south with that particular individual, and he needs to be fired, <laughs> it will be complicated. He can't just be fired like that. Because the person firing him will remember, we went and got this person somewhere, doing his own things. And we told him to leave them and come quickly. We went and interrupted his life and brought him here. Yeah, we can't fire him. Something like that. So you may think whatever you want to think of David Murade. You may have whatever theories you have about him. Yeah. But the truth is that David Murade is extremely close to the powers that be. He's close to the president. He feels the heartbeat of the president. That's important. And so when David Murade speaks, even when he's insulting somebody, <laughs> it is the president speaking. Trust me, that is the truth. So what did Murade tell us? You know, amid all the interruptions, yeah, from the journalists asking him questions, he had a message to deliver. And he had to listen very carefully to understand and to get that message he was delivering. And what he was saying, he said some very important things. So let's get started. Number one, the entry of Martha Karua into Tim Azimio as the running mate of Ray Odinga has had a major impact in the Mount Kenya region. It has gotten the Mount Kenya region for the first time, yeah, and this is the exact word he used, excited. Now, that's a very strong word. Let me give you a very quick example. If you go out on a date where you're meeting your prospective husband or wife, if during that meeting, both parties are excited, what does it mean? It means that they will do very quickly, very confidently, with a lot of my feelings, yeah, because excitement brings feelings, what they need to do. Yeah, get hitched, get married, immediately, as soon as possible. Because excitement cannot be contained for long. So David Murade told us, yeah, and he mentioned that he and Martha Karu have never been friends, which is true. Murade has never been a fan of Martha Karua. In fact, I'll not be exaggerating. If I say, Murade has often been very much against Martha Karua. That's the truth. And he casually admitted that. But having said that, he said that Martha Karua has completely changed the Mount Kenya region. She has been able to do what no other candidate no other politician has been able to do. Even President Huru Kenyatta was never capable, has never been capable of doing what Martha Karu has done in the mountain. Okay? Now I believe some of us already have that information, but it is always good to have a confirmation 
from a credible source like Murade. What that means, I'm sorry you dear, I just want to speak the truth today. What that means is that if elections were held today, Azimio and the presidential team of Martha Karua and Raila Odinga would sweep the mountain. Yeah. What we are hearing, 20%, 30%, all that is not true. What is true is that the mountain has been excited. And the mountain will deliver a huge percentage to Tima Zimio. Number two. Murada revealed to us what is in the hidden server. Oh yes. In referring to 2017, he said something like, Kinaurengo no, ODM people know, everybody knows the results. It was 54-44. 54% to the person who won those elections and 44% to the person who lost those elections. According to the server, lost, hidden, locked away somewhere in France. Now, of course, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out who had 54%. Yeah, It wasn't President Uhuru Kenyatta. <laughs> I can assure you that. Number three, Murada confirmed that the candidate, presidential candidate, George Wajakoya, if elections were held today, would take a huge percentage away from Tim Ruto, from Kenya Kwanza. And he even went further than that yeah, and rubber stamped some of Wajakoya's most controversial proposals to do with weed. Yeah, and he told us several countries around us have already implemented it. Yeah, weed for medicinal purposes. Uganda, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa. He mentioned a number of them. And he added that they are talking to their presidential candidate to consider seriously this Wajakoya proposal yeah, for commercial purposes, for medicinal purposes. But Murade was very clear that Wajakoya's candidature will hardly make any dent on Azimio votes. Now I take that very seriously. Why? Because, because Murade not only spoke confidently, but I have a very good idea of where he got his statistics, his figures. He got it from the state machinery. Now I want to give you some information that not everybody may have. Okay, maybe older Kenyans have it. Maybe Kenyans who have lived out of major cities for a long time have it. Yeah, but many of us in the cities, many of us born town, have no idea, don't have a clue. Now, the state machinery has the most accurate statistics you will get anywhere. Leave alone the polling companies. Polls are zero. Polls are inaccurate when you try and compare them with the state machinery. Polls, if you like, or state machinery research on anything. Let me elaborate. The state has something called provincial administration. Provincial administration means that the government, state house, reaches the smallest village in the most remote primitive part of Kenya. Instantly, they have a chief there. And this chief is working with people on the ground. Mzewa Kijiji, people belonging to Nyumbakumi, etc., etc. What that means is that if somebody in government today wants to know how people would vote if we had the elections today, all they need to do is to send out one message. Yeah? Probably just press one button. And that message will reach each and every corner of the country. And you can be sure yeah, that he will get a response quickly. Within a few hours, 
they'll be able to compute all the information they get back and come up with figures that are very, very accurate. Now, I have reason to believe that these figures were computed and done even before Wajakoya burst on the scene. <laughs> I don't want to say it directly, but let me try and explain. The state machinery has known all along that the entry of this candidate, this weed-loving professor, would only harm the other side of the political divide. William Samoy Ruto and Kenya Kwanza. One of the reasons why I'm super convinced about this is that Wajakoya's message and his messaging is very precise. So precise, so accurate, that I must say, Hapa Lazima Iko Kitu. You know, it is very human for a presidential candidate to emerge and come up with a message and it is not totally consistent yeah somewhere along the way it goes out of the way it goes a bit out of the line it goes a bit offline down the road again it goes a bit offline Wajakoya's message is too straight to be human too straight <laughs> it's all objective is just too precise. Yeah. What I mean is that that must have been crafted well in advance, carefully, using figures, looking at scenarios. If you want to prove that, just take in his interviews, where he's asked all kinds of questions. He's ready for all of them. And his answers are always precise and consistent. Consistent like the way the sun rises every morning and sets in the evening, very consistent, without fail. So when Murade tells us that Wajakoya's votes will not have the slightest dent or will not have any significant dent on Azimil votes, you need to believe him. But by far the most important, the most significant point that came out of this Murade interview is number four and it is the following David Murade told us that Raila Odinga if he were to lose the election to William Samuel Ruto would accept the results he Mazimeo would never contest the results he went on to say that they have their structure agents at every polling station and you know the election happens at the polling station and these people will be taking in the figures and reporting back to headquarters there's new headquarters for the elections where they'll be tallying and if the figures tally with the IBC more or less and they lose they will accept the results and rather emphasize so much on this point that if you're alert you'd start wondering why why the need for an emphasis? He even pointed out President Uru Kenyatta is the only candidate in Kenyan history, only presidential candidate in Kenyan history, who has gone on record conceding defeat in an election, yeah, which happened in 2002, when Uhuru Kenyatta, the then Kanu candidate, lost to Emilio Stanley Mwaikibaki. And so rather told us, Team Azimio have a culture, a tradition of accepting election results. They have a track record, because Uru Kenyatta is in their team, of accepting results. Something which no other political outfit within the borders of Kenya can match or produce. Yeah, because it's one thing to promise, and it is quite another to have evidence of doing what you have promised in the past. And then he also talked at length about the character of the man, Raila Molodinga, and especially how the handshake happened. Yeah, he told us that Deputy President William Samuel Ruto 
was the first to approach rail. Yeah, of course he sent people. And I need to remind Kenyans at that time, Raila was very angry. He was very mad with Uru for what they had done to him in the 2017 presidential elections. And therefore, as a human being, he had a very good motive for teaming up with William Samuel Ruto to teach Uru Kenyatta a lesson. But instead, brother tells us, Raila went to President Uru Kenyatta and told him what the deputy president had told him. And of course we all know that Raila Odinga is big, is huge in Kenyan politics, a living legend. But we also know that for Raila, Kenya has always been bigger in every decision he makes. And so the big news here, the big breaking news, is the following, and it's quite a crazy headline. Deputy President William Samuel Ruto is the one who triggered the handshake. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Atinini, Chris. I need to repeat it. It is William Samuel Ruto in approaching Raila to bring down the government of Huru Kenyatta who triggered the handshake between Raila and Huru. Yeah. And I believe there's a lot of other evidence out there, including words spoken by the Deputy President himself, that will confirm this. And especially the fact that there were discussions between Ruto and Raila people before the handshake. Yeah, those discussions between Ruto and Raila took place first. Yeah, before Raila and Uhuru discussions started. So the first discussions are what triggered the second, which led to the handshake. Now I hope I've not lost you. We are talking about Murathi's emphasis on Azmiu accepting the results of the presidential elections. If they lost. Now why was this so important? Why was this so terribly important? I'll tell you. If you've been very keen following Kenyan politics, you will know that William Samuel Ruto and his allies are convinced that they're the chosen ones. That William Samuel Ruto is the chosen one. Multiple prophecies have told us that Ruto will win the presidency. In other words, the mindset of the deputy president is that he must win and he will win these elections. The deputy president does not have any option yeah, that will allow him to lose these elections. That's what it is. And so what that means is that even if the margin between Raila and Ruto is 80%, yeah, Raila has got 80% more votes than Ruto, Ruto will still contest the results. He will still not accept the results of the elections. Now, I have a very simple question for the Ruto team. If you are truly the chosen one, if you are the one who has been chosen to win the presidency, the one who chose you, the one who sent prophecies to prophesy that you'll win, is he weak? Does he need your help for his prophecy to be fulfilled? Does he need your hand to help him? Please answer that question. Because according to what I know, is that Almighty God does not need help from anybody. In fact, it is the other way around. We humans are the ones who need a lot of help from God. We can't do anything without Almighty God. Anyway, that is the situation. So what does that mean? 
It means that the results of the 2022 presidential elections don't matter. Yeah, Even if Raila wins by a landslide, Ruto will not accept the results. The only way this can work is if the deputy president beats Raila Odinga in the presidential elections by a landslide or Ruto wins yeah, in a way that cannot be contested. Yeah, the margin between him and Raila is such that Raila cannot contest. That one will work. Otherwise, Raila winning the elections, uh, uh, it won't work. Because the Ruto team have already set in motion their plan. They have lawyers already working at every possible scenario. Already creating arguments even before the elections. They will contest that election. Which is bizarre. Because if you look on the ground honestly, even without supporting either side, it is rather clear that that cannot happen. The deputy president does not have enough support to deliver something like that. No way. Now, in case you didn't know, all throughout history, we have had prophets delivering the wrong message, delivering a lie. Yeah. And telling people it is the truth. It is what's going to happen. And so if indeed these prophecies are not true. It's not new. Yeah, It has happened many many times before. And so that leaves everybody confused. Yeah, Which prophecy will you believe? Will you believe the root of prophecy? Or will you believe the Rayla one? It's all very confusing. And some of the people who are delivering these prophecies are people with quite an impressive CV. Yeah, they have a track record. Some of them have been around for a long time. People know them. And they have delivered prophecies. So who do you believe? The only solution in this kind of scenario is for Almighty God to step in Himself. And he has to do it in such a way that there will be no doubt. There will be no maybes. Maybe it is this, maybe it is that. Maybe it is not God, maybe it is Almighty God. No. It has to be something that will leave everybody with absolutely no doubt on their minds. And it has to be something that everybody will see. Not something that one person saw, or a few UDA people saw, or a few Azimio people. No! It has to be something that everybody in the country called Kenya, and beyond in the entire world, will see very clearly. Folks, I believe that is where we are headed. Now, I need to point out the fact that already a lot has happened. I have one simple question for those who have been very alert. What has happened to some of those people who have predicted a route to win? Yeah, do some research. Find out what has already happened to them. That may give you a pointer as to what is about to unfold. You know, no matter what your witch doctor tells you, no matter what your psychic tells you or whoever, the truth is, there are some things only Almighty God can do. Nobody else. Only God. For example, it doesn't matter how you go. It doesn't matter how you leave this world. But it is only Almighty God who makes that final decision that you will depart from the world of the living. That is the naked truth. And that is why you will find a man like the politician Mombasa who gets over 30 bullets pumped into his body and he survives. Somebody else 
trips over a stone. Yeah, a small stone. They trip over. They fall down. And they have departed from the world. That is why it happens like that. There is only one decision maker in this matter. Yeah, the same person who brought you into this world. Yeah, who enabled you to be born by your mother. Is the same person who decides when you will leave. And this is a good place to go into the spiritual. Because you have already started, I believe. The hour of judgment upon the nation called Kenya has arrived. It is with us. And it is going to be quickly followed by the destiny of the nation called Kenya. And that destiny has a lot to do with the great reawakening or revival. Now those of us who are spiritual know that when something as important as this is upon us, God takes over completely. And things which were allowed to happen in the past, things which people did in the past and they got away with, in this season, uh -uh, not possible. Everything has changed. Why? Because it is an important season for the purposes of Almighty God. And those of us who are spiritual are able to identify signs yeah, that give you the signs of the times. For example, if it gets very humid, even though the sun is still shining, there is no cloud in the sky, but it is very humid, you know that rain is coming because the air is heavy with water. It's very humid. Yesterday I walked into a major supermarket in the country called Kenya and I saw a whole section of shelves empty. And in the same supermarket, I went to the section selling unga, unga ugali, maize flour, and I found it fairly empty. There were a few pieces of this precious commodity displayed. And the price was unprecedented. Over 200 bob. More than 2 dollars for a 2 kg, 2 kilograms, packet of maize flour. Somebody told me this morning that economic hardships are part of judgment. And so if she's correct, it has already started. Now there's only one way to prepare. Seek Almighty God in a way you have never seeked Him before. Draw close to Him. Repent for the things you have done that have been against His agenda. Yeah. Even if you did them unknowingly. Like pointing fingers at servants of God who told us the truth and we jeered them and we talked bad about them yeah, because they are not talking what we wanted to hear. They are not favoring our favorite candidate. They are favoring the candidate on the other side. Now is the time to repent because actually we have run out of time. The time is very short. Yes, there's something very exciting coming. Extremely exciting. More than historical is coming. But that bridge you have to cross to get there. I, 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 I. That bridge we have to cross before we get to that exciting place. Ogopa. And you know bridges are narrow. Not everybody will be able to get through. Bridges are usually very narrow. They are limiting. You have to limit yourself to that small space in order to cross the raging river to the other side, to the other very exciting side. This is an ideal time to enter into prayer and fasting. Now I need to make something very clear. When I speak these things, I'm not speaking down to anybody. I'm not excluding myself, by the way. 
I believe I'm a messenger. But even the messenger is in the nation called Kenya. And he has to be judged like everybody else. And I believe it is very important that we all have the same attitude. Yeah, We don't get the attitude of the Pharisees. Better me than that person there. Better me than those people giving false prophecies. No. How do you know you're better? What measuring stick are you using? Because you don't know the measuring stick. The one who is judging is coming with. Do you? So repent. Cleanse your life. Prepare. Until next time, this is Chris Komekucha.